I was looking at um, Pacific Birds and um, the, the role that they play in ancient Samoa. And um, I did a bit of research on that and I stumbled on this bird called um, Monumea, which was a um, which bird that's still alive today and it's a cousin of the dodo. And I just, um, something, I just struck a chord with this, this bird, it was endangered. And having been doing that, I was relating it, um, looking at the actual meaning of endangered species and all the things that we have in our society that kind of look the same now because of globalization. And I, I took exception to um, cars Seeing a case of car in Auckland with all the generic Japanese and European cars was like seeing, I don't know, um, it's like seeing a uh, New Zealand wood pigeon or something flying around in Miller Town. And so I, um, it was nice to have this juxtaposing meanings of endangered species that I was looking at and it made my art practice quite fun. I was thinking like birds um, that were here before. Um, Polynesians got here before the first humans got here. And New Zealand was this big waka, this big landmass that floated away from Gone Land. I kind of saw it in my own sort of arty visual kind of theatrical kind of mind. Well, this is the first society in New Zealand. And the first, the first hierarchical society, so um, like an aristocracy, so. That's why I started looking at the playing cards. We've got the king, the queen, the jack, and everything, and everything's hierarchical. And you know, playing cards have been around for a long time. And um, so I started yeah, superimposing the face of um, the rifleman, which is that tiny little bird from the South Island. Did lots of photocopies of that, stuck them on the wall, and it was really good to get the students' response from that coming in. The magic of printmaking is you can take one little block and it you put it so many different times and it joins up. And it's like, a, it's a big art piece. But you don't have to do circles, like that's a circle there and I've cut into it with some triangles and lines and that. You can do, um, call that shape there. <laughs> and also do sort of squares and that, it's up to you. But just keep it really simple. Lines really work in printmaking, that's, that's where you want to sort of start. And you'd be surprised how it turns out. So take your square. I mean, you've got to basically draw the chisel. Um, and then when it comes to printing, I mean you can be really crap at drawing but you can be a great printer. Um, but if you can combine the two, um, yeah that's just when you have fun. Put it in the middle. So make sure you've got the newsprint on top. It should just, you feel it just jump up a little bit. It's kind of like, pretty much done is you can't get it wrong. And you see people's faces when they sort of pull off the, the print. They, they don't realise what's going on until it's, it's happened. And I mean, it's such a buzz to kind of pass that on. All my ideas are formed in printmaking. Then they sort of move out to painting. Um, and then sort of come back to printing. And then they go out to... Because um, most of the visuals and the animations are all sort of paintings and prints and photos. You make small movies in this period called Director and then you take them into uh, Premiere and the way you mesh editing is the same process that you do printmaking. It's, yeah, it, and then, yeah, vice versa, I'll do something on the editing and shit, that colour looks good on that. I go back to the printmaking studio and then, yeah, work it out. The animation is, I, it's, it, yeah, it is a vital cog um, in my sort of art process. Because so I go back, once I've, I've made five animations, and I still go back and look at them all the time, they still entertain me. It's, uh, I think that's an important point, it's like your art entertains you. I love to make a hologram kind of thing, and uh, um, throw up illusions, yeah, the whole sort of magic thing.